We are going to talk to you today about how you can do less work, or how your Argo workflows can do less work. My name is Julie Vogelman. I am an Argo workflows maintainer. I'm also um, a staff software engineer at Intuit, uh, which is the company that founded Argo and Argo workflows specifically. Hi, I'm Alan Klukas. I'm an engineer at PipeKit. Uh, I'm also an Argo workflows maintainer. So um, what we're going to try and achieve with this talk is how we can save some time when we're running workflows. Um, by, and by saving time, we're going to save cost, running less pods. That are, um, and how we're going to do that is not repeating work that we've already done. If we have already calculated something, uh, we know the answer already, we can use that. Um, if you're familiar with workflows, then you can do this with individual steps or tasks in your DAGs, um, and then use the information that you've run, done in one workflow, run in another workflow run to skip that step. Uh, you can also do this to entire templates, so an entire DAG can be skipped if it's calculates a bunch of things, takes a bunch of inputs, creates an output as using multiple steps or, or a whole DAG, it will, you can use the techniques we're going to talk about here. Um, I'll go over a bit of terminology. Uh, workflows um, and steps can take inputs, so you can take parameters as inputs to a workflow, and individual steps can have inputs and they can have outputs, and those inputs and outputs can be parameters, which are strings, so you can pass information between the various steps in your workflow using strings, which are parameters, or using artifacts. Artifacts are files stored in blob storage, normally S3, or something like that, as your blob storage, um, min.io, whatever. Uh, and all of these things, hopefully, you're a bit familiar with if you use workflows before. Uh, the things we're going to introduce to you today are memoization, uh, which is a very weird word. Um, memoization is a feature of Argo workflows. So Argo workflows had code that will help you with skipping steps. Um, and the magic word is memoization if you need to search things. Uh, work avoidance is a technique. It's documented in the Argo workflows documentation, but there's no explicit code behind work avoidance. Um, but they both achieve the same goal. Memoization is more efficient, and we'll go over that in a moment. So what do you do to memoize something? Uh, you add a little memoize block to your template, um, as shown here. Um, it's got three sections to it. Um, it's got a cache, which is where we're going to store the information from one workflow run to be allowed to pick up in Pick, picked up in another workflow run. Uh, the only option here you have is config maps. Um, we'll talk about the config maps in more detail in a moment. Um, if config maps are a limitation, uh, come visit us in GitHub or Slack and talk about your use cases um, so that we can design something that's more flexible than a config map. Um, You've got two other parameters. Uh, the max age is how long is this cache line valid for? So how long is it? We've stored the result of a step. How long are we allowed to keep using that until we have to rerun that step? In this case, it's only 10 seconds, a ridiculously short time for any real workload. Um, and the most important part of the memorization is the key. The key is what we use to say this time we're running it is the same as last time we run it and they ran it and therefore we're allowed to skip it and use the outputs that we determined last time instead of having to rerun the whole step. In this case, uh, we've got one of the parameters to the template being used and that, that will be a very normal pattern to, to use. Uh, when you do this and memoize a step, um, it looks up the key in the cache to see if we've already run it, and if it's valid, you will go from 
the left hand side where we've got a duration of 17 seconds to do whale say, I've no idea why my laptop was so slow at that point, uh, down to zero seconds. The pod was not spun up at all. The workflow controller decided that this was a, a valid cached entry. You can see that down the bottom, there's a cache hit going from no to yes, and it's completely skipped the step. Um, and that's the main advantage of memorization. There's just no interaction with Kubernetes at that point. No need to wait for a pod to spin up to say, we don't need to do any work at all. Um, this also works in a slightly more sophisticated, but still very toy example. Um, here we've got an output artifact. So the output artifact is a file. We're pretending to do um, DNA sequencing here. So we've taken some input data and we've sequenced the DNA, put it into S3. And this is the second time we've run this workflow and we're able to pull through a fairly invisible line into the use DNA step below uh, the data that we used, we created in the first time run, first time we ran this. Um, and as you can see, the highlighted step, the yellow ring, uh, is what's shown on the right hand side, duration of zero seconds, and again, memorization hit of yes. Um, you can do the same thing for an entire DAG. So first run, it runs our classic DAG diamond to show off DAGs. And then the second time we've memoized the inputs to that DAG and it skipped the entire thing and provided the outputs from the DAG. Um, this cache is in the config map. Um, the config map is created for you automatically by the workflow controller. Uh, this is interesting because many installations of Argo workflows won't have the capabilities of writing. The RBAC rules will not have the ability to write config maps. So if you find memorization is not working for you, that's the first place I would start to look. It's have you given appropriate um, RBAC permissions to the workflow controller so that it can write config maps. It will write them into the same namespace as the workflow controller. Um, or as the workflow, right? Sorry? The same namespace as the workflow? No, same, name, oh, same okay. namespace as the workflow controller, no. which is, again, something, if that doesn't work for you, we need use cases for how to fix that um, uh, so that you could have uh, c caches in the same namespace as the workflow is running. It, yes, genuinely is in the workflow controller uh, namespace. Uh, your config maps are usually limited to, to a megabyte because they're stored in XETRAD. Um, and that means there's a limited number of cached entries you can have. Uh, the controller does understand this and starts to evict things for you, but it may be that you just have too much data and it's not a useful thing as it is. Again, talk to us on GitHub or Slack about how your use cases can, we can improve to, to make your use case work. Um, the config map is a key value pair in the normal config map way, the key being the key from the memoize. So that's nice and easy to read. And the value will be a chunk of JSON, uh, which will contain the time it was run and the outputs from that run so that we can take those outputs and use them in the event that we're skipping the step entirely. entirely. We're, we're, we're faking all those outputs. They're not really faked because we've done them already. We've calculated the answer you wanted. Um, so the advantage of that JSON being human readable is you can go in there and edit it. You can look at it work out why your workflow memoization is not working, um, perhaps. And um, if you want to edit it to remove a line so that it reruns, you can do that as well. OK, so I'm going to walk through an example here of a workflow template um, whose job is to sequence DNA and maybe do something with that. And you can imagine that sequencing DNA is a very time intensive and compute intensive task. So if we can do that let, you know, fewer times, that's better. Um, so specifically, step A here uh, you know, takes an input parameter, uh, you know, which is basically like the person whose DNA is being sequenced. And you know, obviously we need to pass like all of that blood <laughs> information to it as well. Um, and, uh, and so it sequences the DNA and then in this case um, uses an output artifact to go store it in S3. Um, 
And the step was configured with memoization. So basically, um, behind the scenes, uh, the workflow controller will create that config map. And maybe for the key, you know, you've indicated who the person is, right? Um, so you could imagine many different keys list live in this config map, right? One for, for each of those people. Um, so now when the workflow template gets run a second time down here, um, you know, assuming this key entry has not expired, then the workflow controller will not run this step at all um, because it doesn't need to. <clears throat> so, um, all right, so we talked about, you know, the step might output a parameter, it might output an artifact. Well, parameters and artifacts are sort of capital O outputs of Argo workflows, but really you can have other types of outputs. Um, for example, you might output to a database. And so then the question is, um, will it work if you memoize that step? Um, and the answer <laughs> is that if you uh, actually use the very latest Argo workflows, um, this will work. Uh, but unfortunately, prior to the very latest, um, you need to use an alternative technique if you want to be able to do this kind of thing. And that technique is called work avoidance. <laughs> and it's actually a fairly simple concept, really. Basically, it just means that your container logic can just go and check first before it does anything, right? Does this data exist? Um, you know, if it does, if it's of a recent timestamp, then I'm not going to do anything. Um, of course, in this case, you know, the workflow controller had to go to, uh, had to go and actually deploy the pod, <laughs> you know, um, which it did not have to do in the other case. Um, so if you do go and look up work avoidance on the Argo workflows documentation, uh, you'll also see that it mentions that you can use a marker file uh, to indicate, you know, whether the data was written. Um, so basically, you, you know, your, your container would both write to the marker file to say, hey, the data's here, and then it would also, before it runs at all, check to see does, does that marker file uh, exist already. Um, I'm not sure offhand the cases where you want to use a marker file rather than just checking for the data itself, but it's sort of the same concept. Okay, is there any other time that you can't use memoization? Well, Alan mentioned that the config map, uh, you know, is going to have a size limit, um, and it's one mebibyte um, by etcd limitations. Um, so in that case, you would, could also employ the work avoidance technique instead. Um, and just to kind of look at, oh, sorry. Um, you know, reaching that limit. If we go back and we look at, you know, this, you know, here we're basically saying, you know, use this whale sale, whale say cache config map to store the values of all of, you know, any potential key here, right? Um, and so, you know, if you have enough of those keys and if the value is big enough, um, then, then you're going to get to that limitation, potentially. Um, now, that's specifically with parameters, because with parameters, the, uh, the workflow controller actually embeds the full values into the config map um, itself, versus uh, if you have an artifact, um, then it will, it will install, instead include the, the paths to the artifact. Uh, so, it's, so it's not actually the values in themselves. So that data, if you're using artifacts, it's, it's going to be smaller and less likely to hit that limit. OK. And I will turn it back. Um, this quote is usually attributed to Phil Cox. 
Carlton um, uh, that there are only two hard things in computer science, cache and validation and naming things. Um, so what I'm meaning here is, what I'm trying to talk about is that it's quite hard to know when you should or shouldn't memoize things, what the, the bounds are of valid things to skip. Um, and there's a rule that allows you to guarantee a, a safe memoized step. Um, uh, computer science talks about pure functions quite a lot in um, functional programming. Um, if you have uh, what I'm going to call pure steps, so where the outputs of a step, I mean, it could be any kind of step or a, a whole DAG or whatever, are derived only from the inputs of the step. They are manipulating the data that's coming in through the inputs and you are storing, using all of those inputs or perhaps a hash of those inputs as the memoization key, um, then that's a pure step. It's not interacting with anything in the outside world. So skipping it will not miss updating a database. Skipping it will not depend upon the weather today versus tomorrow. Um, so you can guarantee that that information that is derived from the inputs will be valid whatever the time of day is, whatever, however long it is since you last ran it. And um, that would allow you to think through your workflows, perhaps refactor some of them to produce pure steps that you can guarantee to memorize. If you can't do that, uh, you're going to have to be careful. Um, workflows will do what you tell it to do. It will memorize things that really shouldn't be memorized. Um, it will skip a step when the keys match and the time since you started, uh, sorry, time since you stored that memoized information is less than max age as you've defined it. Um, and that may be good or that may be bad and you're gonna to have to work that out for yourself. Um, that's the end of our talk. Um, you can come and find me. Uh, I'll be around all week on, the, on our pipe kit stand. Um, talk about memorization or anything else Argo related. Uh, there's a couple of links there for the documentation on memorization and work avoidance. There's, some, there's an example memorized step in the examples folder in Argo workflows. Um, if you'd like to book a uh, meeting, there's a QR code on the right hand side. Um, has anybody got any questions? And by the way, feel free to talk to me too. I just, <laughs> I'm not on the slide though. <laughs> Do you want to catch the microphone? <laughs> I have a quick question. How the database will support the multi-tenancy? Suppose if the cluster has like a 10 namespace. So it's challenging <laughs> at the moment because there's, there's no multi-tenancy capabilities there. The RBAC is either your workflow controller can write to config maps in its um, own namespace or it can't and that's your only choice. That's why I was saying we need some use cases for uh, how, there are already issues in workflows about this problem. How would you like it to work for you? Uh, mm -hmm. Contribute there um, and we'll try and fix it. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you said you know, that all the input as a key. Are you using like a namespace slash workflow as a workflow or namespace slash template name as a key? Uh, no, there's no, the key is whatever you put in that, okay. in that block. So you, you could have two completely independent teams writing to the same config map and okay. yeah, there's no, there's nothing to help you there, I'm afraid. <laughs> okay, got it, got it. Because the original memorization is based on that multi-tenancy. That's why the config map is invented. That's why I asked about it. Yeah, it, it's a problem that we're aware of and needs fixing. Um, yeah, I know. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. I'm Bala. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Haven't met before, sorry. <laughs> yeah, um, hey, just curious about the work avoidance for managing a key value store. Um, is there any advice you have for lifecycle management when it comes to creating that database? Like, have you done providing or provisioning your own uh, like Redis pod along with a workflow set so you avoid some of that key value pair? Um, not personally, no. I have uh, any. Nope. 
Okay, uh, I was uh, just curious. I've, I've done something similar with an etc. D, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, I'm not sure that's necessarily useful. <laughs> okay, yeah, thank you. Hi, um, on the uh, definition of the workflow, right, you had um, the config map name there, right there at the bottom. Yeah. Um, does that imply you can have multiple config maps? You can, okay. you can use parameters in there. I checked that this morning. Um, so you could, if you put the same thing in your, if you put your key into your config map, you get a config map per key. Um, so you get one meg per thing, but there's no real lifecycle management or garbage collection that will properly happen in that case, as far as I'm aware. Okay. So, but you would have a, a config map per tenant, per se? You'd need to somehow get the tenancy information in as a parameter. You could do it, but you're then relying. On, it depends how you're deploying templates. If you're, if you've got control and over your template deployment, perhaps you can inject parameters between the template being written by somebody and ending up in the cluster to add further things. Um, I don't believe there's a way of sort of using workflow defaults for that sort of thing, though. So it's not. Yeah. Okay. Right, thanks. Now, it seems like it may be a bug that the config maps uh, aren't always being <laughs> yeah, garbage it, collected, I guess, right? The, the config maps never disappear um, completely. They can get garbage collected entries from them, but yeah. Hmm. All right. Yeah, sorry about that. Thank you very much.